grade 11s, welcome to our revision video on compound solids. Remember that compound solids are two or more solids that have been put together to make a new solid. In this example, let's calculate the volume of this figure. It may look more complex than other questions that you've dealt with, but if we break it down into prisms that we recognize, we can calculate the volume quite easily. Remember that volume is the space taken up by three-dimensional objects. So, we just need to calculate the volume of the cylinder and the volume of the rectangular prism and add these volumes together to get the total volume of the figure. The base of the cylinder is a circle, so the volume of the cylinder will be equal to pi r squared times the height of the cylinder. Substituting in the given values, we get the volume equal to pi times 0, 0,5 squared times 6. This equals 4,71 cubic meters. To work this out using a calculator, you need to use the pi key and round the decimal answer off to two decimal places. For the rectangular prism or box, we can use any of the rectangular faces as the base. Substituting in the given values, we get the volume equal to 4 times 1 times 2, and this is equal to 8 cubic meters. So the total volume of this figure is equal to 4,71 plus 8, which equals 12,71 cubic meters. What happens when we need to calculate the surface area of a combined or complex solid, such as the example we've just looked at? Do you think we can just calculate the surface area of each figure and then add them together as we did in the case of volume? In this case, it is not that simple. The surface area is the total area on the outside of the figure. If we were to paint this figure, for example, we would not be painting the bottom circle of the cylinder. So when we calculate the surface area of the cylinder in this figure, we need to subtract one circle base from the total surface area. But we would also not be painting the area of the bottom circle of the cylinder on the rectangular box. In other words, when we calculate the surface area of the rectangular prism, we also need to subtract the area of the base of the cylinder. Therefore, we must calculate the total surface area of the rectangular prism and the cylinder and subtract the area of two circle faces from that total. Try to complete the calculation on your own before looking at the solution. The surface area of a cylinder is 2 times the area of the circle plus the circumference of the base times the height of the cylinder. But we need to subtract one of the circle bases from the area of the cylinder as previously explained. So, to calculate the surface area, we use pi r squared plus 2 pi r times height. Substituting in the given dimensions, we get the surface area equal to pi times 0, 0,5 squared plus 2 times pi times 0, 0,5 times 6. Using the pi key on your calculator and rounding off to two decimal places, this works out to be 19,63 meters squared. Now let's calculate the surface area of the other solid minus the base of the cylinder. The surface area of the box is calculated by 2 times the area of the base plus the perimeter of the base times the height of the prism. But then we must also remember to subtract the area of one circle that is going to be painted on the box. Substituting in the given values, we get 2 times 4 times 1 plus the sum of 2 times 4 and 2 times 1 multiplied by 2 minus pi times 0, 0,5 squared. The exposed surface area of the box works out to be 27,21 meters squared. So the total surface area of this solid is 19,63 plus 27,21 which is equal to 46,84 meters squared. You could calculate your answer using a different method, but just make sure you follow the proper steps and you will get the answer right. 
Let's look at an example of calculating the volume and surface area of a solid that is not a right prism. The height of a cylinder is 15 centimeters and the radius of the circular base is 4 centimeters. A hemisphere with the radius of 4 centimeters is attached to one end of the cylinder and a cone with the radius of 4 centimeters and a height of 5 centimeters to the other end. The length of the side of the cone is 6,4 cm. Calculate the volume and surface area of the solid correct to the nearest centimeter cubed and the nearest centimeter squared respectively. Why don't you try this on your own before moving on with the lesson? Sounds complicated, doesn't it? But it becomes much simpler if we first draw a rough sketch to help us see what the solid looks like. Firstly, we draw the cylinder with height 15 centimeters and a circular base with radius of 4 centimeters. Then we add on the hemisphere. A hemisphere is just half a sphere. Finally, we draw in the cone on the other end with a height of 5 centimeters and a side of 6,4 centimeters. We are now in a position to do the necessary calculations. For the volume of the solid, we calculate the volumes of each of the three different parts of the solid and add them together. The volume of a sphere is calculated by 4 over 3 times pi r cubed. So for a hemisphere, we divide that by 2. Substituting in the radius of 4 centimeters, we get the volume equal to 4 over 3 times pi times 4 cubed divided by 2, which works out to be 134,04 centimeters cubed. Now let's calculate the volume of the cylinder. The volume of a cylinder is calculated by multiplying pi r squared by the height of the cylinder. This is equal to pi times 4 squared times 15 centimeters. And the answer is 753,98 centimeters cubed. Finally, the volume of a cone is calculated by using the formula of a third times pi r squared times the height of the cone. Substituting in the given values, this gives us one third times pi times four squared times five centimeters. That works out to be 83,78 centimeters cubed. Now that we've found the volume for each of the parts of the solid, let's add them together. This gives us a total of 971,76. The question asked to give the answer to the nearest cubic centimeter. So this rounds up to 972 centimeters cubed. The second part of this question asked us to find the surface area of the solid. We need to decide which are the exposed surfaces and only include them in our calculations. Here are the three parts of the solid. We only need to find the sum of the surface area of the shaded areas. We'll start with the hemisphere. The surface area of a sphere is calculated using the formula 4 times pi r squared. So, for a hemisphere, it will be 4 times pi r squared divided by 2, which is 2 pi r squared. We substitute in 4 for the radius and get a surface area of 100,53 cm squared. Let's calculate the surface area of the cylinder now. To calculate the surface area of the cylinder, we apply the general formula of 2 times the base plus the circumference of the circle times the height of the cylinder. But remember, we need to subtract 2 times the area of the base, which is 2 pi r squared. This gives us 2 times pi times r times h. With substitution, we get 2 times pi times 4 times 15. And this gives us an answer of 376,99 centimeters squared. Lastly, Let's calculate the surface area of the cone. The surface area of a cone is equal to pi r squared plus pi times r times s. s is the length of the side of the cone. 
we need to subtract the circle at the base, which gives us a formula of pi r times s. We substitute in the given values for the radius and the side of the cone. And this works out to be 80,42 centimeters squared. Our last step is to find the sum of these values and then to round off the answer to the nearest unit. 100,53 plus 376,99 plus 80,42 equals 557,94. This rounds off to 558 centimeters squared. Thank you for joining us for this revision lesson on compound solids. Remember to work through the task video now to check that you have mastered the work. You will be able to find more resources on our website. You can also have a look at the series guide called A Guide to Revising Area and Volume, which contains some tips, the written tasks presented in the task video, the task answers, and the list of some formulae for solids. Goodbye.